to AM News. Thanks a lot, Gandel. Good to join you. Uh, Solomon, let's get right into it. What a match we've got ahead of us tonight. We've got DRC Congo against Ivory Coast. And who would have said that DR Congo would actually be in the semi-final? Exactly. A lot of people didn't give them uh, some chance. I mean, they qualified by virtue of being the third best team in all the groups. So they came in just uh, through the window. Uh, not a lot of people gave them the opportunity to come and squeeze in even into the quarterfinal out of the group. Yeah. They had to depend on other games in the group you know, to be able to qualify. A lot of people thought they were not really going to make it, but they made it out of the group. But hey, you know, for a lot of teams, when you get into the quarterfinals, that's when the championship really begins. But the DR Congo, uh, Kendall, you don't have to ride them off. Their football has been on the rise. We know the exploits of TP Mazambe, and we also... Uh, last year, the finalist in the African CAF Champions League was an, a Congolese team, yeah. AS Vita. And actually, the coach of the DRC currently, he is also the coach of uh, AS Vita, the biggest club in... We're talking in, about in Foran Ibenge. Exactly. He is a coach. So he manages the national team and also manages the uh, AS Vita, the club. So their football has really been on the rise. And I think he's the right choice. He's the only African coach left in the championship I was right going to say, of the four <laughs> coaches left at the African Cup of Nations 2015, the only African coach coach left is for Hongi Benge. That's right. He's the only one. So it's, it's something that he, he, he has he's learned. I think uh, coaching AS Vita has given him a lot of experience playing around Africa. And I felt uh, coming in here and the way that they really came back from two goals down to score four goals, they've, it, that was really fantastic. Uh, and for me, would they emotionally be ready for the game against the, the Elephants of Cote d'Ivoire? That's the big question. Now, I, that's actually quite interesting. But before we go too far into that, I want to touch a little bit on uh, quite a contentious issue. The fact that there have been so few African coaches at Africa's soccer showpiece 2015. Do you think it's something that uh, needs to be looked at in terms of national federations and who they choose? Or is it something that we shouldn't worry about and just look at uh, football as an international game? It's something that we should worry about, even though football is a global sport. But at the same time, we want to be able to create local coaches, give them opportunities for them to be able to show what they're able to do. I'm not saying uh, African coaches are the best in the world, but we have some great coaches uh, around the world, like uh, Apia from Ghana, who took Ghanaian team to the World Cup. Steven Keshi has been a brilliant coach. Here we have Sheikh Mashaba for Bafana Bafana. And I think they know the players and they know the football culture in certain countries. And we must really consider I think for some FA, they must consider saying, look, uh, in the span of four years, we must make sure we have a, a, a local coach. And we breed a local coach, maybe start with the under-17, under-21, and make sure they go through the stages or, or even club sides. That way we're going to be able to create a great local coaches and we're creating jobs also. <laughs> yeah, no, with a, with a nice one. We actually do need to create jobs for Africans in <laughs> Africa, should we not? And I mean, talking about which, and before we divert too far, David Notuan has done extremely well with the under-20s out in Russia. Uh, he's one of those coaches that's been uh, built up through the ranks for South African football. So maybe uh, in, the, in the future we'll see something coming out of that as well. Now we'll yeah. see him at the NAFCON. Yes, and I think Safa has learned their lesson because uh, f uh, to be honest with you, the last four or five years, a lot of the international coaches that coach Bafana Bafana, they, they, it was a failure. They yeah. failed. Yeah. And, and some of these coaches is not that coming from Europe uh, or from South America, they're not really exceptional. You know, uh, so if you fail, you fail. You have to try to make sure you believe in the local coaches and give them opportunities. Alright, now let's go not go too far off and actually, because this is a discussion for another day. <laughs> it's as big a topic that should take up That's right. uh, the rest of our bulletin if we if we allowed it to. Uh, let's go back to tonight's semi-final. Uh, we've got um, some key players for DR Congo that will be playing. And one of them that uh, a lot of people have uh, sat up and taken no notice of who, they didn't, who didn't know this man, Mbogani Mbezua. Um, Bogani Bezu has been absolutely fantastic for the DR Congo. He's been fantastic. I think in the last Africa Cup of Nations here in uh, South Africa, he played well. I thought he was a great striker. Uh, he, his movement are really excellent. He's precise. He's very strong in the air with his heading. Uh, you know, and, but a lot of people didn't really know about Mbogani. And he, he's been really really been a great player. He plays for Anderlecht in Belgium. And believe it or not, uh, a couple of years ago, he was the Belgian Footballer of the Year. Uh, you know, and he was the Belgian footballer of the year for, 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 for uh, Anderlecht. And coming in, uh, during the group games, he didn't really perform for me the way he should. And, you know, some big players, when you get to the quarterfinal, the yes. knockout stages, that's when they come alive. And I thought, you know, his two goals uh, in that game against uh, Congo Brazzaville was excellent. He was saying, look, I'm still here and I'm still very relevant. What about Bokila? Tell us a little bit about <laughs> what do you think about him. Do you think he's one of the key players? For I think guys? he's one of the key players. I think for me, he's one of the unknown players. He's, he's one of the players that people don't really 
pay attention to. Uh, but his goal was brilliant in the quarterfinal, and and I feel he's he's beginning to come alive. He he's one of these players that for me is one of the revelation of the tournament. All right, now uh, let's let's touch quickly on on Ivory Coast, and uh, because they're the perennial underachievers on the continent, uh, they've always had a, a a plethora of stars playing for them all the way back to to the nineties. Nineteen ninety two was the last time that Ivory Coast won the one and only time that Ivory Coast won the championship. Uh, what do you think? Who do you think is going to be standing out for them in this match tonight? It's going to be uh, a game that you know both teams are really going to be looking at, saying, "Look, we have to go out." Cote d'Ivoire uh, is it seems like the golden era of Didier. Drogba, Emmanuel Eboa, and Didier Zakora. You know, they thought that was a generation that was supposed to win. But now, you know, these key players are out of the out of the, the screen. So you have a team that has a good blend of youth and experience. There's Colo Torre, there's Yaya Torre, there's Divino, there is um, uh, Wilfred Boni, there's Serge Orea from PSG. Now, it's a good breed of players. And I think that's the difference between this team and the team of the past. And they're going to go into this game knowing that the last time we won the Africa Cup of Nations, and the only time, was in 1992 in Senegal. I remember uh, you know, uh, Alan Gomeni was the goalkeeper. But they're going to go into this game also. It's not just because they want to win, but also because remember, DRC beat them at home 4-3 in the last qualifying games before they, they qualified here. Now, absolutely. And one of the things that, uh, that we picked up while we're preparing for this interview is that everybody's aware that this is the final. Yes, qualifiers <laughs> are qualifiers, but there's a different type of uh, tempo, a different type of determination required to get through uh, to this one. Any predictions for tonight between the DRC and the Ivory Coast? I think it's going to be a, a, a great game to watch. Uh, uh, DRC have showed that you know, they're capable of really going all the way, and they would really want to make it to the final because they're here already. But for the Ivorians, it's not just getting to the final. I think is winning the cup. Uh, and I feel the way they play against Algeria, which for me was the best team in the tournament, uh, I think they have what it takes to go all the way. So I maybe predict like maybe a victory for Ivory Coast, maybe 2-1. And then tomorrow night we've got Ghana against Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea, some people say, shouldn't be in the, semi, in the semi-final <laughs> at all. What do you think? They came through the back door. They did their best. They also showed they're really good. As, um, as a more German, I'll be playing for Ghana. But Ghana is going to go in here knowing that the last five Africa Cup of Nations, they got into the semi-final. In 2012, they got through the final, but, they could, but couldn't win. But in 2010, rather, and this is their best opportunity. Uh, I think this is the end of the road for Equatorial Real Guinea. They've done their best. It's their, their biggest sporting success ever getting into the summer final. I think this is the end of the road. So it's a victory for Ghana and maybe, maybe two goals to nil, I guess. Wow, fantastic. Uh, you know, I'm going to hold you to this one. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a predictor, you know. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're just having fun. But we really do enjoy the fact that you're able to give us these insights into these huge matches that are coming up tonight and tomorrow night. Thank you so much, Solomon. Great. Enjoy the game tonight. I right, know. You too. <laughs> All right. That was Solomon Izango Shoms giving us some insights on the first semifinal happening tonight, which is DRC against Ivory Coast. A prediction at 2-1. And then maybe tomorrow night at 2-0 for Ghana against Equatorial Guinea. So we've got an Ivory Coast Ghana uh, final on Sunday. But we'll see about that. We'll be chatting to the man on Monday morning.